Magic mirror on the wall, who will get the harshest sentence of them all? That's right, we're going to the beginning of the Disney animated canon with the Golden Age. If you think about it, Disney didn't pull any punches with their villains. A few of their early villains are dark and depraved, going to lengths that some modern villains wouldn't dare go. But which of these baddies are getting off easy and which are going to end up in the slammer, or worse? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Sentencing Disney Villains for Their Crimes. So let's hop back in the Wayback Machine and go back to where it all started, with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The first baddie on the docket is the Magic Mirror. The mirror's only purpose is to tell the evil queen that Snow White is the most beautiful in the kingdom, and later tells her that she's in the dwarfs' cottage. In the cottage of the Seven Dwarfs. Well, Snow White. This is nothing less than aiding and abetting. However, we're sentencing it to death because, come on, it's a mirror. There's no use giving it jail time, fines, or community service, so the only reasonable thing to do is smash it to pieces. Next is the Huntsman. He's ordered by the evil queen to kill Snow White and give her heart as proof. This gives him an aiding and abetting charge. He also commits attempted murder by almost stabbing Snow to death. We're also charging him of providing false evidence when he gives the queen a pig's heart and passes it off as Snow's. He couldn't bring himself to kill Snow and let her escape, so this would let him off fairly easy, but he almost killed someone who's royalty and a child, so we decided to give him 15 years in prison. Now we have the evil queen. We're aware that she dies at the end of the film, so we'll pretend that she's alive to stand trial. The evil queen's first crime is is not long into the film when she alludes that the Huntsman will be sentenced to death if he doesn't kill Snow, leading to a death threat charge. She also uses witchcraft to transform into an old woman and poison the apple, and has many other spells. And of course, she's guilty of murder by poisoning Snow with the apple. This can also be attributed to terrorism, since she tried to make political gains through violent means. Just like her fate, we decided to sentence her to death. In 19th century Germany, where the film takes place, this would normally be carried out via guillotine or handheld axe. But considering she practiced witchcraft, we'd likely see her getting burned at the stake. This year got us Pinocchioed out, but that's not stopping us from sentencing the villains from the 1940 movie. First, we're sentencing Honest John and Gideon. They frequently assault each other, with Honest John usually on the receiving end of Gideon's hammer. A brief visual gag during their first interaction with Pinocchio also shows Gideon attempting to pickpocket him. Even though Pinocchio is willing to go with them to both Stromboli's and Pleasure Island, we will charge them with kidnapping as Pinocchio is a minor and cannot legally consent. Um, on to the theater. Honest John is also guilty of impersonating a doctor before Pinocchio is taken to Pleasure Island, as he most certainly doesn't have a medical license. Finally, all their crimes are attributed to them aiding and abetting both Stromboli and the coachman, the former wanting a real wooden boy for a show, and the latter wanting a boy for Pleasure Island. For their crimes, Honest John and Gideon will both get life in prison. Up next is Stromboli. Being the definition of greedy, he pays Pinocchio Pinocchio with a fake coin as payment for putting on a successful show. For you, my little Pinocchio. Not only is using counterfeit money illegal, paying your customers with it is just as bad. He's also guilty of kidnapping by locking Pinocchio in a cage, as well as death threats when he tells him he'll make great firewood when he's finished with him. So we're sentencing Stromboli to 25 years in prison. Now we're on to the coachman. Immediately, the coachman is guilty of kidnapping as he captures young boys and brings them to pleasure island on his carriage. While there, he allows the boys to run amok and cause trouble. Many boys could have gotten hurt while destroying all the property, so he'll be charged with a lot of counts of child endangerment. He recklessly allows the boys to drink as much alcohol and smoke as many cigars as they want, adding on many other counts of giving drugs and alcohol to minors. Finally, the elephant, or rather donkey in the room. Over time, the boys turn into donkeys, whom the coachmen whip and capture before they get sent off to work in places like the small mines and the circus, which is slavery and trafficking. We think we can all agree that he's deserving of nothing less than the death penalty. It takes place in 19th century Italy, so the execution would likely be carried out via guillotine. For the last Pinocchio villain, we have Monstro. Gaining a reputation as the deadliest whale, it definitely shows. There are several sunken ships in the area where Monstro's sleeping, so it's implied that he killed a lot of sailors. And given all the fish that get swallowed up by him, many of them probably got eaten, adding up to murder charges. We're including kidnapping, as Geppetto, Figaro, and 
Cleo get stuck inside his body. Finally, after everyone escapes, Mantra violently chases them, almost killing them in the process, adding an attempted murder charge. Because Monstro has a possible human body count, he's a threat to those that go to sea, so we're gonna sentence him to death via harpoon. We know it's a sad and gruesome way to go, but measures similar to this are often taken in real life to particular wild animals that have a track record of killing people. The next movie is Fantasia. Our only villain is Chernabog. It's tough to sense as a guy who's, you know, the literal devil, but we'll treat him if he's a real living person. His whole shtick is summoning the dead along with Hellfire, which we immediately recognize as being necromancy and arson. And only a little while later, he just nonchalantly throws a bunch of his demons into the fiery pit. If that mass of evil grin doesn't say premeditated murder, we don't know what does. Because the scope of Chernabog's crimes are so massive, we're sentencing him to death. Since he practices necromancy, he would be put under the witch trials in 1800s Russia and would be burned at the stake. Now we have Dumbo, and the first characters we're charging are the clowns. They perform an act where Dumbo is a baby in a burning building, and they play the parts of firefighters. They'll first be charged with aiding and abetting the ringmaster, who we'll get to in a second, by leaving the small house to burn with Dumbo at the top, which also adds one count of animal abuse. Use. More accounts will be added as they splash Dumbo with buckets full of water. One of them even forces him off the top of the building by hitting him on the butt with a block of wood, and finally has him fall into a large tub. In the end, we'll sentence the clowns to 10 years in prison each. This may sound light, but trust us, their boss will get a much heavier sentence. Next, we have the ringmaster. He's pretty heinous. Not long after his introduction, he whips Dumbo's mother and shackles her and locks her in a cage after she attacks a kid. With that said, he likely doesn't treat the rest of his animals that well either, leading to many animal abuse charges. While the clowns are seen having drinks, their dialogue suggests that their boss underpays them, which is yet another crime. Let's go tell the boss! With all that said, the ringmaster will be sentenced to a good 25 years in prison. His employees will probably file a class action lawsuit against him, so he'll be paying them $5,000 each in damages. The final movie of the day is Bambi. We're gonna start with Rano. He's a rival deer that Bambi comes across, and they fight for the affection of Felicity. He's got one count of assault as he pushes Feline out of the way with his antlers. He and Bambi then fight, and Ronald makes the first move as he throws his rival onto the ground, adding another assault charge. They lock horns and trade kicks and blows, making this assault and battery. Because this is a natural thing male deer do to fight for mates, we're only gonna give Rano one month in deer jail? I don't know what to call it. We'll let the animal sort it out. Our final villain is Man. Man is a hunter who's a huge looming threat throughout the film. We know killing animals technically isn't murder in legal terms, but that's what we're gonna treat it as. He kills one animal off screen, Bambi's mother, as well as a quail. His presence also disturbs the peace. In the climax, not only does he commit attempted murder by sending his dogs after Bambi and shooting him, he also commits arson when he leaves his campfire unattended. The entire forest almost burns down and thankfully none of the animals died. Because hunting is a normal sport people do, we won't charge him for his body count, but there's no excuse causing a forest fire. If it was intentional, his punishment would be greater, but because it appeared to be indirect, man will be given five years in jail. All right, court is adjourned. Let us know what movie or TV series should be next up on the docket. Hit that notification bell and binge more of our sentencing videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.